<laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, my, uh, your attention, please. Uh, my name is Min Yen, um, but everyone just calls me Min, like the minimum function. That's how you remember. Um, and I'm pleased to introduce our uh, and open our workshop on education and social science technologies of West. Um, this was a program that we conceived uh, with the help of Juan, who's sitting in the back, uh, as an initiative that the Department of Computer Science at NUS had uh, sponsored uh, as one of two summer workshops that we, we wanted to hold. And so this uh, particular workshop is a collaboration with another institute at NUS called the NUS Institute of uh, application, for Application of uh, Learning Science and Educational Technologies, which is a mouthful, so we just call it ALSAT. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. So first, welcome to Singapore. Uh, uh, this is one of the taglines that we have in this country, the world's uh, first smart nation. And uh, uh, part of being smart is, of course, education. And so that's why we put it here. And uh, as I said, uh, why we are organizing this workshop is because the School of Computing is strategically trying to organize uh, a, a set of uh, uh, workshops every year on uh, a strategic key priorities in Singapore. And we thought education would be a good place to start out uh, because of certain constraints within you uh, in the university at NUS. So one thing in NUS, we have both research faculty as well as educator faculty, which is akin to lecturers in the UK system. So for uh, people on the uh, educator track, uh, promotion and tenure is always a, a little bit uh, of a thornier issue because most uh, faculties understand how to do promotion and tenure for research faculty as judged by, for example, publications. But for uh, uh, people who are concentrated on pedagogy, that is a little bit more difficult. Okay, so this workshop is, uh, is in fact appealing towards uh, our educational faculty, and I see a number of them in the back. Um, uh, we are holding this so that you can get some uh, network with the uh, leaders in this area uh, worldwide. Okay, and it's also a chance for us to uh, introduce the Institute of ALSAT, uh, which is a new unit just uh, set up earlier last year, but um, getting to a small steady state at the, at the mid of this year, so right now. And so I want to give you a little bit of overview for both of these uh, institutes. So the host uh, unit is the School of Computing. Our faculty strength right now is about 105 faculty that's split over two different departments. This is a fairly big uh, a unit. Uh, we have a student population of over 30,000 on campus, of which 2,000 are in the School of Computing. And outside, as I said, is a new institution that's uh, based uh, at the provost level, so reporting directly to the provost, unlike a lot of universities. It's going to centralize a lot of the student data that we have collected in various units and make them transparent and organized such that researchers can get at them. Okay, so especially if you happen to be a faculty member teaching a course and you want to pilot an intervention and find out what type of outcomes they produce and help to uh, inform fellow people in pedagogy and learning sciences about your findings, this is uh, one method of doing it, and, and as part of this workshop, we are hoping to showcase to you why, as a faculty member, you should be partnering with Alset uh, to uh, chase research grants outside. So I won't go into detail a lot about that, but uh, uh, tomorrow when we open for the research part of the workshop, I'll, I'll cover the various uh, sets of institutes and initiatives in Singapore that uh, make funding available for tertiary, secondary, and primary school education. So one of the challenges that we're um, looking at uh, in piloting here is uh, to create more research on how learners learn, which is the mission of ALSAT. So later on in the afternoon, we'll have a kickoff of the second EdTech Challenge at NUS, which will feature mostly students, teams, trying to think about how education in the university will change five years from now. So we've asked them to take that visionary perspective and, and cast uh, some thoughts onto that. So uh, one thing I want to point out is that with the ALSAT unit, we are trying to make available this uh, very large data lake that we have on the left side of the chart. 
which is again, as I said, an amalgam of uh, data from all uh, university units uh, where we've cut most of the bureaucracy away. And so uh, primary investigators will have to apply just to LSAT to get uh, permission to access the data. And we will do all of the running in-house to cut the red tape for you. Okay, so what does a data lake mean? It just basically means we put in all of the collection of data. So it will include registrar data about what students collect, right? It might also encompass, it will encompass uh, data from a learning management system. So those of you at NUS will know IVLE, it's our own in-house management system. It will also uh, encompass mobility data. So I think a number of researchers are interested in uh, Wi-Fi connections uh, that come from students when they are on the buses or in campus. What are people surfing? Uh, what sites are they looking at? Uh, those type of information will also be incorporated into our data lake. And then, of course, uh, survey and student feedback data that uh, we normally get as uh, understanding the student outcomes from each course. Okay. And then where does it apply to? Well, first and foremost, it has to help the students. So that's the mission of Alset is to help learners learn. So we want to plow all of this back into helping students uh, enable their course selection, uh, their study habits, uh, uh, thinking about their motivation, but also to help faculty, right? Because faculty need to uh, innovate in their coursework and delivery and uh, keep up with the trends of how uh, technology should enhance learning. And finally, policy, right? The policy about how to instrument courses, how to recommend courses and uh, to get students to interact, whether there are certain uh, uh, delivery systems, whether two hour lectures or three hour lectures are more useful or not. And all of this will be arrayed on student dashboards, right? Uh, uh, for both faculty and students uh, to make available so that they can be useful um, in making decisions that will impact their lives, right? So this is Alsace Data Lake as a whole, and uh, you probably recognize the scenery here. That is uh, Singapore's downtown. Right. And I think uh, the important thing about this is this type of institution is really something that uh, the data lake is something we can assemble here in Singapore is a, a, a strategic advantage of being in a centralized uh, 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 autocracy where uh, we have the provost as taking the major lead on this initiative. So that will be all the data that we know that we're going to put into the data lake. But we also want to know from all of you sitting in the audience, what's missing from this picture? You know, there's other data that's out there. Is it worthwhile collecting that data such that we can enable uh, better interventions or, or better analytics that can help our students and our faculty and inform policy better? Okay, so we'll be asking you about this question throughout the entire symposium and uh, the panel on Friday will also hopefully feature uh, questions from you to our international speakers to think about uh, uh, these issues. So here we are, we're at uh, uh, the IQ building and uh, just to give you an idea of what's going on today, these are the venues that we have. Uh, um, so when you came in on the first floor, there's an auditorium in the gold color. Uh, you probably came in from uh, somewhere over here and took the lifts up. Uh, but if you go in this direction, you'll be at the IQ auditorium. We have a number of uh, 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 tutorials that will be held in this venue, including the deep learning and the natural language tutorial will be here, as well as, you, uh, as, well as those of you who are interested in the computational social science cluster. Uh, the uh, tutorial led by Tuan will be there in the afternoon. But for the most part, uh, most of our educational uh, technology and learning science uh, tutorials are going to be here, either in this classroom, the STMI classroom, which is this green box here, as well as the Kai Executive Training Classroom, which is just a couple uh, steps down the hallway. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joseph to talk a bit about the schedule for today. So, hi everyone. So I'm I'm a new assistant professor in um, information systems. Okay. So I'm a new assistant professor in information systems and analytics. So inside the school of computing and knowledge analysis, they included me in co-organizing. Right? And so just in terms of knowing where to go or what's kind of going on, so there's this URL, tiny.cc 
forward slash west, you can plug it into your phone or your computer, and that always pulls up your most recent schedule. And that's where you can see directions to rooms, which are kindly added by us to volunteers, as well as um, their links to live streams and recordings. So if you want to share with colleagues, or if you miss a talk and you want to check it out, we've actually got YouTube links on the schedule. You can just click on it, type C live, or watch it later. In terms of um, thinking about this sort of overall structure, so today there are tutorials. Is the sound okay or step away? Okay. So today there are tutorials, and this is a mix of tutorials by our, our keynote speakers. So maybe just Carolyn Rose, um, Dragon Gasovic, John Stamper, and Shangan Hu. And we also wanted to kind of provide an opportunity for School of Computing students and others more generally to get exposure to different methods they might not otherwise. So we have an opening session, and then next is going to be, um, as I mentioned, all these things are live streamed and recorded, so you can see them later. And some of these student volunteers are also adding slides as well. So you can check everything out and share it with other people. And maybe just to identify student volunteers, so you may, um, Jeffrey, and who else is there? Abdullah. And there are two other people. So if you have questions, you can ask them for advice or help. And I think many of the other students who are here today are probably happy to help and give suggestions too. Then um, John Stamper is going to talk about Learn Spend Data Shop. So Min mentioned this lake, Data Lake, uh, which is a really unique resource. And John's worked on many grants and big initiatives with respect to what are tools that you can use to import this data and, and analyze it in different ways, but actually you can close the loop between data about what students are doing and then knowing what knowledge they have and how to improve it. There's also a, a tutorial on basics of deep learning by people from Men's Group, Animation Postad and Muthu. Oh, great, you guys are there. Okay, Animation Muthu. And then I'm going to give a, a presentation. Uh, the next session, 11.30, I'm going to give tutorials on um, how do you leverage technology for collaborative, dynamic, precise experimentation. So that's a combination of psychology, technology design, and machine learning. Then Tuan is going to talk about econometrics and social science methods. And we've also got work on sentiment analysis on social media. So Tuan, that's Tuan back there. And is Wen Fiang Li here? OK, but they'll be there in the room once you show up. Then we've um, got lunch. And then the final, set, the second last set of tutorials from Data Design and Dynamic Support for Collaborative Learning by Carolyn Rose, so a lot of language technologies. Then Twan's going to keep on going on the social science track. And then Dragon Gas is going to talk about learning analytics, data policy adoption. And so you can kind of see the rooms, they're all listed there. And you can also find them on that link, tinyltc forward slash west. Or ask the people maybe at the registration desk or otherwise. And then to kind of finally wrap up, we'll have one tutorial by Shang and Hu on auto tutor. So implementation, conversational based intelligent tutoring system. So this is tools that they built to allow anyone to really build intelligent tutoring systems where people might be students might solve a problem, but you can actually then ask questions and have a natural language processing on the back end so they can be a bit of a conversation about solving these. And then we're going to close off. And so tomorrow we're actually not going to be here. We're going to be over at the School of Computing and that's where we're going to have the full two days of research shows. There's also the um, EdTech Challenge. So Min, do you want to say anything about that? Okay, so uh, I don't know how many of you are here for the EdTech Challenge. Uh, and, okay, yeah, I think most of them will be coming for this afternoon. So uh, if you are uh, interested to hear more about what we're doing for the EdTech Challenge, you should come to that session. Basically, uh, Tuan's group has created some uh, simulated data that has the data schema that we uh, are having in Alsat's data lake. So you can play around with that data to actually uh, operationalize uh, your, your solutions for that. And I think uh, those of you who are interested in the challenge will also probably want to go to Tuan's tutorial on the CSS cluster because uh, basically in the computational social science side, uh, they receive a lot of data sets from uh, businesses. And of course, businesses do not like their data leaking out. So uh, basically, all of their data has to reside on a ring fenced uh, fence post. Uh, I don't know if I'm getting all my language wrong today, um, but a protected barrier system where you can execute queries and, and do the interventions and, and analysis just on the data cluster without exporting that. So I think this is a, a really good tutorial by Twan's group if you're interested in 
in doing the data challenge, uh, uh, please go to that as well as the kickoff. So the kickoff will have its own opening ceremony later on. I uh, finished the slides for that this morning. Yay. So um, uh, we'll see how that goes in the afternoon. So um, there's no tutorial closing session today. So after six o'clock, uh, we're um, dismissed, right? Um, and then tomorrow morning, uh, again, we'll be starting on the other venue, which is at uh, LT19, which is on uh, closer to the business school side of things. So uh, we hope to see you all there. Um, just one more note, uh, just to make sure that we're all um, clear about this. We're on the third floor of IQ, the right uh, side of this uh, chart, and the most important uh, facilities are the restrooms. So uh, you just have to swing by the Kai classroom over there, and uh, the restrooms are on that side. So with that, I'd like to close our opening session, and then we'll uh, break into our tutorials. Again, for the first session, uh, we have um, Peter and Data Shop, which will be right in this room, and the basics of deep learning by Animesh and uh, Mutu, which will be downstairs in the IP auditorium. You have to take the lift downstairs to go there. Okay. All right. Thank you so much.